For many, SSL VPN is known as something which helps to connect remotely to their company resources, either via web browser or application. And it is exactly that, although there is always more to it. SSL VPN uses TLS protocol to create encrypted tunnel between user devices and VPN server. This ensures that all data transmitted through the tunnel is protected from interception and tampering. That said, you can be anywhere in the world but still work like you are connected to company's network using web mode or to no mode. Both of them typically require user authentication, ensuring only authorized individuals can access the network. This is done through the usernames and passwords certificates or multi-factor authentication. In this video we are going to touch mentioned aspects of SSL VPN with configuration and testing. For easier memorization of the process here are the steps which we are going to take. Keep watching till the end to see my phone reach server in GNS3 lab using this concept. Because cloud for us is reached via this Cisco router, port forwarding on interface gigabit 2.0 is going to be required, as through this interface we are reaching SD1 member 1 on FortiGate, and we are going to achieve that with following NAT statement, which tells Cisco router every time somebody approach you on interface 2.0 and port 10.4.4.3, forward it to 10.100.10.3 with the same port number. Now, as usual, I will configure FortiGate with this virtual machine. Configuration is going to happen in our management VDOM root. And as described in first step, I will start with creating user groups. Because I want to show you both SSL modes, I am going to name groups and users intuitively for easy recognition. So the first one is going to end up with web and second one is going to end up with done. Second step, create users via user definition. For now, both accounts will be local. And after password creation, assign them to appropriate groups. Second step is finished, so now let's set up SSL VPN by clicking on VPN, then SSL VPN settings. In this demonstration, we are going to use both SD1 members. Second one approachable directly, first one via Cisco router. Port is going to be 10443. Changing it is good common practice as we can avoid interference with the management access. But this can be only concerning if management access is enabled on interfaces. Since for SSL we are going to use egress interfaces, in real world it is very rare that management is enabled on such a interfaces. Just keep in mind such a scenario might happen. Certificate will be built in so you can expect warning in browser. 
and since this is lab environment we are going to prolong idle logout inactive for. Default portal mapping needs to be configured despite it is not going to be used. Here we will map portals to the groups and users which we have created. I'm just going to match group name with appropriate portal functionality. That would be it, we are now ready for the third step and that is configuring SSL VPN portals. Routing address override means that addresses entered here will be accessible for SSL VPN users. In our case it is going to be VLAN 10. In Web Access Portal I am going to only predefine bookmarks of the services which I am aware that they are running in my network. On Kali Linux there is an Apache service started, therefore I am going to give it a name Intranet. Next bookmark is going to be remote desktop service which is available on Windows 7 virtual machine. In our lab this is like real world computer so the real configuration will apply on FortiGate. Now we are ready for the last step, configuring firewall policy. Incoming interface is going to be SSL root. Outgoing interface is going to be where resources are shared. Sources in this case will be SSL assigned address range and groups which we have created. Destination will be VLAN 10, services all and disable NAT. Before we start testing, I'm going to quickly check what IP address is currently assigned to interface gigabit to slice zero. And there is an IP address which I'm going to use for connecting to SSL VPN. Because my physical machine is in the cloud for the lab, I can simply connect by opening browser. And to test availability of SSL VPN on first SD1 member, type in Type in IP address of gigabit interface followed by 10443. And here is our SSL VPN portal, so let's start with the user configured for web mode. We can test our intranet bookmark first. So far so good, the page has been loaded. To further unpack the link on which we have landed, it indicates that connection is SSL TLS encrypted. IP address is our port forwarding gateway followed by proxy within the brackets and then HTTP within the brackets which indicates that connection is being handled by FortiGate HTTP reverse proxy. Finishing with the IP address of our local intranet server. Now let's test RTP bookmark which should open connection to another local resource and remotely control it.
and that seems to be working fine as well. Next, let's log out web mode user so I can show you differences for user configured for tunnel mode. As you can see, you are going to be forced to install application and this is exactly what we are going to do. After installation you are going to need exact configuration in order to successfully establish tunnel. Those configurations are usually shared by admins in form of text or configuration files with information how to deal with them. During connection process you will be notified about self-signed certificate. Upon successful tunnel establishment you should be able to access resources directly just like you are in the same network. And sure enough we are able to ping computers within our lab. To confirm that, let's directly access intranet web page by simply typing in IP address of the server. RTB connection can be tested via built-in Windows application. And sure enough, we are getting there. Now let's get into cool part, I am going to approach second SDVAR member by using my phone. So here is how it is look like. Connecting to GNS3 lab using phone might seem unreal, but it is not first time we are doing that. Feel free to check video which you are seeing on the screen to learn how it is possible. RDP and internet bookmarks are working, so let's take a look on other possibilities. IP address which I have typed is our Cisco switch and that is reachable. Let's try Telnet to that switch and because we have not set up any passwords yet on that switch, we should be kicked out. Which is default behavior on Cisco switches and with that I am going to say goodbye and see you in next video. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? 
the hell is an SSLVPN? Show more, 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 show more.